and good evening, everyone. I am Fatma Wati Lambo, the moderator for the webinar today. First of all, I would like to welcome and thank you for joining our today's webinar on expert guidelines for research students and their supervisors. This event is being organized by the Bangladeshi Students Union Malaysia and Education and Research Desk. Before we move to our uh, webinar, I would like to inform all of you, if you have any questions regarding on today's webinar, you may type in the chat box and I will read your questions during the sharing session. I'm sure everyone is excited to today's talk and the speaker for today's webinar is Professor Dr. Saidur Rahman. And let me introduce our speaker. Professor Dr. Saidur Rahman is currently working as a distinguished research professor and head of the Research Center for Nanomaterials and Energy Technology and uh, RCN MET, uh, School of Engineering and Technology, Sunway University, Malaysia. He is also working with Lancaster University as a full professor. Previously, he worked uh, as a chair professor at the Center of Research Excellence in Renewable Energy uh, at King Fahad University of Petroleum and Minerals, KFUPM, Saudi Arabia. Uh, prior to joining KFUPM, Professor Saider worked 18 years in University of Malaya. Clarivet uh, Analytics Thomson Reuters awarded him highly uh, cited researcher for being among the top 1% researchers for most cited documents in his research field for eight consecutive years, that is from 2014 to 2021. And in 2019, Professor Cyril won a Vice Chancellor's Award for Achievement in Research from universe, uh, Sunway University. Professor Cyril uh, published more than 600 journal papers, mostly in top ranking high impact, uh, impact journals. He has 66,678 citations with an H index of 133, according to Google Scholar Citation. He has supervised more than 80 postgraduate students so far and has secured and managed more than 25 million ringgit research grant. That is approximately 5.5 uh, million USD as a PI and member. Professor Saido is working in the area of emerging nanomaterials and their applications in energy storage, uh, heat transfer, solar energy, harvest, uh, solar energy harvesting, and environmental uh, remediation. Let's now proceed to listen to our speaker's presentation. Without further delay, the floor is yours, Prof. Thank you, Batmawati, for the introduction. Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Let me share my screen first. Can you see the screen? Is it visible? Is it in PowerPoint mode? Yes, Prof. Visible, Prof. Okay, okay. Thank you, participants. I can see around close to 50 participants. Looks good. Okay. So as Fatma Wati mentioned, I have some experience. I work in University of Malaya, uh, where I established my strong foundation in research. As you know, University of Malaya is one of the best university, premier university, top university. So where actually I um, grow, I established my research capabilities over there. And then I was also sometime in King Fahad University and now at Sano University with Lancaster University with joint appointment. And also I'm happy to share that uh, even the private university, as you can see, it is number one in ASEAN. So there are many interesting things here. That's why I have joined this private university and overall uh, very impressive uh, lab facilities, some other opportunities given. Okay, anyway, so let's focus my um, our today's uh, our uh, main uh, agenda. That is, as you can see, the guidelines for research students and their supervisors. So basically, I will be sharing my experience. So as Fatma Wati mentioned, I have supervised almost 80 to 90 students. Some of them are doing very well in 
Australia, US, Canada, and even some of them are also in top administrative positions like dean, provide chancellors, and so on. Okay, so that's actually the uniqueness of my presentation here. So maybe around one hour, I will be sharing my experiences. Okay, as much as possible. And if you have questions, better you put in the chat box so that I can read and Patmawati also can recite. Uh, I'll try my best to give some answer. Okay, let me go ahead. So these are some of the things I'll be talking here because time is limited. We may not be able to spend too much time, but uh, I think this will be something, some of the points I can highlight and then later on also I'll be sharing my YouTube channel because time is always limited, but the channel is never limited. One stop center, one stop opportunities where you can explore at any time at your convenient time. Yes. Okay, so when we are talking about this uh, supervision, uh, PhD studies, master studies, higher studies, Sometimes I feel you don't have proper preparation and planning. As a result, sometimes some students take 10 years, 15 years. So I was in UM, so I remember one student from uh, neighboring countries of Malaysia spent almost 15 years to complete his or her PhD studies. That's extremely uh, bad practice, <laughs> certainly. So if you know some uh, if you make a good plan, this will help you to finish in time. Sometimes also we call it graduation on time. You may have scholarship for three years, so you need a very good planning. Otherwise, you cannot finish uh, within three years and you need to pay from your own pocket. Okay? So to avoid all this, you need a good preparation and planning. Uh, then uh, proposal, what I mean is candidate defense, you need a proposal. Some universities, private universities, somewhere also needed work completion seminars, okay? So as a student, you need to know some of the requirements. So one slide also will highlight some of the requirement with respect to Malaysian practice, but all these are also practice all over the world, okay? It may vary some point to point, but in general, I'll be sharing the global practice because I'm working with uh, all over the, the, with the collaboration with all over the worlds, okay? And I know some of the practices in US, Australia, and Canada. And when we talk about this thesis, supervision, student uh, higher studies, writing is very, very important. So you need to write your thesis, you need to write number of papers, you need to write your proposals, you need to write your progress report. So writing is very, very important, okay? so. Even though writing is communication skill, but there are other skills also, this communication skill is extremely important because you are going to communicate your results to scientific community with the panel members, with your supervisors, with the collaborators. So if you don't know how to write, how to speak, how to address the comments, so you will be in big troubles. Even though you are a very good student, your results are outstanding, breakthrough, but if you cannot write it properly, if you cannot draw it properly, if you cannot express your good things so that other non-science-based people also cannot understand, then sometimes uh, you will not be considered as a good researcher. So these skills are not only for your thesis, I think for your job also, this communication skill is extremely important. Once you finish your master's, PhD, so you'll go for interview, so in that interview, actually, you need to speak, you need to present, so you need to sell your research. So if your communication skill is very poor, I can tell you that you will be in a great difficult situation to get a good job. Okay? Also, when you will be finishing your PhD master's, you'll be joining as a lecturer, so you need to talk, you need to give a lecture, right? So if students cannot understand, if you cannot convince them, if you cannot speak well, if you cannot present well, student will complain because there is a feedback form. Okay? If students are not satisfied, they will report to the university management, to head of the department, to the dean, and you will be in big troubles. Okay? So communication skill is also very important. These are the best place, time during your master's PhD to improve your communication skill. So one of my students, I have supervised many students, so one of my students is a good researcher, but his communication skill is weak. 
So I have been persistently telling him that it will be problem for you. So I told him every day you don't need to spend two hours, three hours, at least 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you spend every day to improve. So he is trying that. Rather than saying that after finishing my master's PhD, I'll focus. No, that is not good practice. Good practice is regularly you spend little bit of time consistently that will help you to overcome some of your challenges. Okay. And since this is a research, you cannot work alone. So you see when people publish paper, you'll see there are sometimes four people, 10 people, even science in nature, 100 people are there, right? And sometimes maybe you don't have some of the equipment in your lab with your supervisors. Sometimes maybe some of the topics or subtopics are not within your uh, areas. Maybe let's say uh, statistical analysis or some material characterization analysis, your supervisor is not that strong, you are not that strong. So you need to find someone who can help you to overcome all those challenges. So collaboration is also very, very important. Financial scholarship, so for higher studies, normally these are also issues, challenges. So uh, if time allows, I'll be talking on these things also. Okay. And also finally, it is very important for higher studies, you need the necessary resources, lab, databases, for example, publication uh, databases, LCBR, Science Direct, OPAS, Web of Science, for the different analysis and particularly to download the necessary papers. Without uh, downloading, without available paper, actually you cannot, you cannot conduct critical review of literature, you cannot identify your novelties, you cannot design your projects, so many, many challenges will be because of this proof rate. Particularly, all these are very important. So based on my experience, sometimes researchers, uh, even supervisors also design a project in such a way that it is very, uh, uh, what is called the dreaming project, but sometimes they don't know that they don't have some of the equipment, lab facilities, materials, and as a result, students suffer. And sometimes they change the topic. So these are bread practices. So whenever we take our students, I ask the students, I have a uh, video on my lab. So please visit, watch that video, and then prepare a proposal aligned with the available resources we have in our lab. If you design a project, that cannot be uh, Completed. The recording data has stopped. Generated. Data cannot be generated. Then you will be in big troubles. Okay. So these are very important issues. You need to understand. You need to plan. So this is also under the plan. When uh, you are planning, you need to ask your supervisor also. Do we have all the necessary equipment to conduct research in in on this topic? This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Okay, now let me talk about the preparation and planning. So here are three things I'm talking, research topics, objectives, regular meeting, uh, timeline, sorry, not three things, three, uh, four points. So why research topic is important? Today, as you know, when you are in social media, probably you will see that uh, a lot of discussion on high impact research, citation impact, H index, right? So when I was doing my research, uh, during my master's on household appliances, uh, after finishing that, I was thinking that this is not that impactful research. Okay? So uh, if research topics are not strong, not attractive, not with the global grand challenge areas, hot topics, actually it will not give you much impact. Okay? So since I started my research on household appliances and I feel that this topic is not that. The recording I has stopped. I slowly moved to high impact research topics once I finished both my master's and PhD. For example, as you can see, I'm working in the area of nanomaterial. So these are some of the new recipes. Solar energy, renewable energy. I also do homework. Who this meeting is being recorded. The world, who are... Uh, who has top citation, who are publishing in high impact journals. Uh, by doing that homework, I can, uh, I tune my topics that will give the impact. Okay, so that's why research topic is very important. And I also have a video in my YouTube channel, how to find a high impact research topics. Okay. Then 
uh, you need your objectives of your thesis of your overall plan and goal so as you can see uh, objectives are smart objectives defined here so why objectives objectives are your goal for this two years three years four years five years so if you don't have goal you don't know where you will be reaching okay so this is what i call the boundary so when we start our research with uh, my phd student master student first of all we discuss about the objectives some draft objectives two three four objectives and i told them these are your boundaries at this moment these are a corner of the sea you cannot cross that border without my permission okay because if you cross that border it will be ocean so you will get lost okay so these are boundaries to confine so that student can focus okay without a boundary you cannot plan you cannot make your future goals okay so these objectives are also very important and objectives are defined by smart objectives so today i will not talk much about this writing all these things little bit of this uh, some of these things uh, planning some guides some tips so overall discussions will be there so for more understanding about the writing smart objectives so uh, you can watch some of the videos in my youtube channel uh, writing uh, with better impact okay so these are called the smart objectives uh, okay you will find more details in my youtube channel and also uh, sometimes you uh, don't have good planning so as a result when there is a time to submit your candidate at defense progress meeting uh, six month report uh, then actually you face difficulties if you don't have this regular meeting so as i mentioned i have supervised around 80 plus uh, students so it is one of my uniqueness in most cases actually i regularly meet with my students so when i was in university of malaya i had around 30 students regularly i supervise so every week actually i meet with them okay and as a result i can make the plan and this is also the role of supervisor so today's topic is not only for students i think it is the role of supervisor also these are very important thing if you don't regularly meet with the students if you don't give them guideline if you don't tell your expectation if you don't ask them to make a good plan what they are going to do today tomorrow this week uh, after 15 days one month so if you don't meet them and if you don't give the proper guideline again they will get lost so these are also uh, responsibility of the supervisors to make regular meeting okay so it can be face to face it can be online it can be verbal it can be uh, by email communication also uh, you can so whatsapp communication also different ways actually you can communicate so it's, it does not mean that you need to meet always face to face different way you can uh, do that and this is very important thing and through this actually you can identify strength weakness potential students weak students and as a result as a supervisor you can make a very good plan so by doing this actually i identify the very good student strong students and then i don't need to spend much time with the strong students I need to spend more time with the weak students. Okay, so these are some of the weaknesses, some of the strengths, some of the challenges, some of the unique points actually can be identified through these regular meetings. Also, any KPI, any future uh, plan also where the students are doing well, submitting in time or not, regular meeting actually will ensure this. So these are very important things. Sometimes um, student supervisors both never met for six months, one year, and when there is a time to submit a report you are rushing you don't have uh, necessary things so you will be in big troubles and this also will make you non-compliance okay so please uh, make a good plan with the regular meeting and other things and also timeline uh, i mean when you are going to prepare your uh, review paper when you are going to uh, submit your candidate chart defense when you are going to conduct experiment when you are going to conduct your literature review so all those details timelines for your three years four years five years you make it and time to time you revise it because timeline cannot be fixed exactly okay so this is changeable time to time you update and you discuss uh, with your supervisor so that it is up to date okay planning time management so if you have good plan so you provide their two months three months and at the end of this critical review of literature you also will produce a review paper and 
will be submitted. Okay, so you provide a uh, <clears throat> rational or reasonable amount of time for every activities. Okay, monitor your own progress. As you know, sometimes supervisors are very busy, very busy professors. Maybe it will be hard for you to find every day. In that case, you make your own KPI, own timeline, and monitor your progress by yourself. Okay, this is also one of my uniqueness. Anything I want to plan, I make my own timeline, and I see. Uh, let's say I will uh, develop a proposal within a month. So after one week, I'll see how much is my progress with my team members, and then. Uh, every week we will meet and we will see how is the progress. So at the end of the month, we will ensure that these things are done. Okay, meaning that you make your own uh, monitoring progress in case supervisors are busy. Of course, if supervisor is very active, he will or she will ensure that you are doing, you are progressing well. You are fulfilling all the necessary uh, activities, conducting all the activities along with that timeline. Okay, make your own KPI such as a uh, first draft of a paper, a conference paper, developing or refining objectives when you will uh, uh, file a patent, prototype, conference paper. So PhD has a lot of activities, right? So with all those activities, make your own plan. Attend seminar, conferences, and other things, and also be familiar. What are the elements? What are the activities? What are the things that you need to do for your PhD and master's, right? writing a review paper, design of experiments, so all these activities, identify, list, uh, discuss with your supervisors, with your collaborators, and make a time, timeline, and pro monitor your progress by yourself, okay? Self-monitoring, self-management is the best management, okay? So this is an example of a timeline, so you can put two months, three months, four months, so phase one, phase two, phase three, different way, actually, you can make your overall timeline. Let's say you are a PhD student, so you make a target for three years. Okay, so uh, when you will define your title, when you will do your coursework, research methodology, literature review, proposal depends, okay, objective one, objective two, objective three, when you are going to conduct your experiments, when you are going to attend conference. So with all those relevant activities associated with your PhD and master's, you make the activities and then you make your timeline. Okay, and also some milestone probably after six months, you will put a timeline for a milestone that you'll submit a review papers. Okay, so uh, make your own uh, activities and timeline and monitor always. Don't always work for your supervisor. So, uh, in consultation with the students, you develop in such a way so that you can monitor, you can see the progress and it can be revised so that progress is well, okay? It's not too far, it's not too much deviated from the some actual plan. So it can be plus minus 5%, 10% deviation, but it should not be too much deviation. So the next part is the writing. This is actually the most important part and very challenging for uh, non-native English speakers, right, like uh, Middle Eastern students, uh, ASEAN students, because we are not born as a native English speaker. And you need to be involved in writing a paper. So when you are writing a paper, sometimes it is not one paper, two paper, uh, maybe three, four, five papers. And this is actually lifelong practice. You need to improve your writing for your paper, uh, candidate chart defense, report, thesis. So it is extremely important. So uh, in most cases, actually, the candidates research are face difficulties in writing in English. As you know, research is conducted is in English. So your writing paper, your grammar structures are very, very poor. So when you are going to write all this in high impact journals, certainly if your writing is not good, it will not be attractive, it will not be clear, it will not be uh, manageable, you cannot uh, convince the editors, reviewers, and as a result, paper will be rejected. Your thesis also will be in big troubles. All evaluators, panel members uh, also will feel very, very upset if it is very poorly written, okay? So that's why writing is very, very important. So those who are from non-native English speakers countries uh, always spend time on improving writing. So I, let me share my example. So when I was enrolled in my undergraduate, 
in Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology. So uh, uh, it is conducted is in, in, in English. So first few weeks, I was very difficult situation, challenging situation due to English because I was studying uh, all my uh, high school, school uh, college in, in my own mother tongue language, even though there are some subjects. So since it is very, uh, uh, you know, the getting chance in Buet is actually really something uh, very uh, prestigious. So I also cannot go back. I also cannot stop. So I started to improve the English, how to improve. So I started to read the English newspaper. I use at that time dictionaries. Every day I spend half an hour, one hour, you know, initial few days, it was extremely difficult to go through. <clears throat> The dictionaries and uh, you know the even uh, one sentence sometimes it took around 10 minutes but after uh, uh, one week after 15 days and even after six months i don't need uh, i did not need the dictionary again and also not only that dictionary i also spend a lot of time in reading newspaper because newspaper is the storehouse and that actually english newspaper reading helped me extensively to improve my uh, english language <clears throat> Okay, and regularly I uh, purchase uh, English newspaper in my hostel, so I can read at any convenient time because common room or uh, in the university level, sometimes uh, resources are, you know, close, uh, uh, maybe after six or seven, but if I buy my own newspaper, I can practice it at my convenient time, even when I'm sleeping, taking a rest. So this is how I improve my language. And even nowadays also, I, uh, I learn. Okay, and now it is very convenient to learn. So it is very important. So you need to focus particularly those who are weak in writing, you need to spend time. This is also communication skill. So why it is important for your paper, thesis, report, proposal, so on. And also when you are going to submit a written documents for your job, for your promotion, for your other purposes, uh, if it is very poor, I'm sure that you'll face difficulties, okay? So these are some of the requirements at the university level. Let me drink water. Patmawati, everything okay? Can you listen? Yes, yes, Prof. Everything's okay. All right, very good. So this is an example with respect to Malaysia, but it may vary from country to country, uh, university to university. Slightly, some of the things may require May, may change. So with respect to Malaysian in top universities, uh, normally Scopus or Web of Science Index journals, for example, University of Malaya, uh, you need to publish two papers in ISI Web of Science. Okay, so these are the requirements. Without fulfilling these requirements, you cannot be graduated. You can submit your thesis, but final degree cannot be confirmed, conferred without fulfilling this requirement. And some university uh, let's say in UK, US may not require this uh, uh, publication. But to me, I think these are very important, even though not required, but you always focus on publication because these are best training. So today I'm distinguished professor. I was chair professor among the top 10 uh, professors because of this one of the focus of publication. My supervisor every day knocked me, pushed me, any paper accepted, rejected. Okay, so that now I... Uh, can uh, say that because of that pushing, actually, I was focused on research. I was very much on research. And as a result, you see my profile. You see now uh, my designation, as you can see, because of one of the uh, reason is actually uh, extensively focused on the publication. Okay, So even though in some universities it is not compulsory, but you make your own KPI. And also when you are going for a job, looking for a job, Without this publication also, I don't think anyone will consider you. Unless you prove, prove yourself uh, extraordinary candidate uh, by providing uh, discussion, some other uh, results and so on. And also these are written documents and also it's uh, uh, when it is published, anyone can see. So that's why these are very important things. Okay? And also the progress report. So monthly progress report, six month progress report, progress report progress with the supervisor, these are also required, okay? So as far as I know, if you are under scholarship, you need to submit your progress report so that your scholarships are renewed, 
Okay, so please, that's why I say that timeline making good plan is very, very important. These are the things sometimes you ask your supervisors, ask the coordinator, associate dean with your respective universities, what are the requirements? Sometimes they also will give you program handbook, okay? And there also will be administrative officer. For example, at Sano University, we have administrative officer for the postgraduate. He or she will give you the necessary guideline so that you know. And if you also don't know, sometimes ask them, okay? And also with respect to Malaysian uh, higher studies, you need to complete your research methodology. This is in most cases a theoretical courses, like what I'm talking here. This is about the research methodology, how you will conduct your research. But like in uh, North American, Australian, US, Canada, they may have some theoretical courses. Very comprehensive examinations are also needed. Okay, so along with research methodology, some of the courses, theoretical courses, for example, heat transfer, thermodynamics, computation and analysis, some additional courses also will be uh, there. Okay, you need to fulfill that requirement as well. So seminar, so it can be uh, candidate chart defense, it can be work completion seminar, it can be seminar before submitting your thesis, okay? It can be also like a conference where you present, um, okay? Sometimes at the university level also, so in different cases, these types of seminar actually will help you to improve your communication skill, to share your good things so that, you know, other people also will be able to give some feedback, comment, so that you can improve. So these are good practice along with the publication in top ranked journal, okay? So uh, candidate chart defense after six months or within a year, you need to submit your candidate chart defense report so that uh, committee can see your progress and you are allowed to continue. So you need to know when and how to prepare this. You work with your supervisor, so I work, uh, with the university uh, administrator so that in due course of time, you can complete your candidature defense. Without completing this, actually you cannot proceed to the next step. So these are some of the requirements. If candidature defense is not completed, maybe you also cannot submit your thesis, okay? All the necessary requirements from the handbook, from the postgraduate office of the respective universities, try to understand, try to get the necessary information so that you fulfill all the requirements, okay? Sometimes uh, you also need to uh, complete the ethical courses, ethic related courses, all those also you need to fulfill. And most importantly, uh, external internal examination also is, you know, as you know, the for PhD and masters, this is evaluation. These are very, very important. This is basically your final exam, okay? So here will be external internal examiners in your respective field. It can be from locally, it can be uh, outside, okay? It can be combination. So these are expert people, they will evaluate your thesis, okay? And there will be written comments, there will be written exam, uh, there will be examination uh, by the panel members and there will be also viva, okay? So this is very important. So that's why your communication skill is very, very important. Presentation skill, speaking skill, writing skill, uh, PowerPoint presentation skill with the animation, uh, some video is very, very important, okay? And you need to able to answer the question. So uh, you have to have also very listening capabilities. You have to understand what type of question they ask, okay? So these are the requirement and you need to get ready for this thing. So particularly this viva is very, very important. Even though your written things are good, but if you cannot answer some of the questions, so it might be something difficult, okay? So that's why you need to practice, you need to uh, attend particularly the conference seminars. And also I think when you submit a paper in journals, reviewer gave you comments, the so same types of comments, maybe uh, uh, panel members, examiners also may ask. So these by, by publishing, by attending seminar, actually you are getting ready, you are preparing yourself for this viva, for your PhD and masters, and even for your uh, job. Okay, so this Bible also, similar types of Bible also when you are going for interview, right? So normally if you don't have experience in presenting, first time Bible, you will feel hesitant, you will feel burnout. Actually without a good practice, sometimes you cannot speak well. Uh, so I know many uh, good students also cannot speak well. So as a result, they are not selected. So make a long-term plan to improve your uh, communication skill, particularly the speaking skill, presentation skill, and so on, okay? 
in some university, I think these are also practiced. There are called Toastmaster Club. There are also some students uh, voluntary uh, committees. They also organize seminars. So, so don't focus only your writing, thesis, publication. Also focus on this improving your communication skill. So in one slide, I'll talk more about that communication skill. And also, as you know, uh, there are sometimes uh, contents are similar. So plagiarism may be an issue. Okay? So be familiar, try to understand the definition of these content similarities and use content similarity software to uh, improve this uh, so that content similarities are very, very minor. And also take note that um, uh, content similarity tools also cannot detect your image, figure in JPEG form. So only text can be detected. So these are the things also you have to be careful. <clears throat> so uh, this is just some simple way of defining a thesis, uh, one or two slides. So what is a thesis is a written, those who are new probably for them, I'm trying to define it. So it is a written record of work that has been undertaken by a candidate guided by a supervisor. So a thesis must be guided by a supervisor. Many times students ask, can I submit, can I work without a supervisor? No, because you are not experienced enough. So supervisors are experienced. So you need to be guided by someone. A thesis is a long piece of writing. Okay, 100 pages, 200 pages, 300 pages, okay? On your own ideas and research that you do. It is your own uh, major contribution. Uh, thesis particularly, of course, when you write a paper, many other authors also involved. University degree, especially for higher degree, such as a PhD. Okay, a short thesis, whether undergraduate or postgraduate is evidence of candidate's capacity to carry out work independently. This is very important work, okay? If you want to be a good researcher, you need to work independently with less guidance. That's the best practice, okay? A very good student, potential student, will be very lightly dependent on their supervisors, okay? So this is one of the unique capabilities, characteristics of good researcher should be independent with a minimum guidance, meaning that you can do all the things by your own. You can spend a lot of time to learn, to improve, to attend, okay, with the without the guidance. Of course, if there are good guidance supervisors, uh, it is good. But as you know, supervisors sometimes is very busy, sometimes may not get enough time. In that case, this independent research capability is extremely important, okay? Guidance and analyze, communicate. So you see the communication is very, very important. Significant parts of your results to your supervisors, to the editors, to the review panels. So that's why this is very important. And also analyze. You need to critically analyze your results. That is very important. And mastery of your literature. So that's why I mentioned critical review of literature. You know, mastery meaning that even you know more than your supervisors. Okay, so that's why these are the things also question will be asked during candidate defense, during the viva, how much knowledge you gain, whether you are a master on that topics or not. So that's why a lot of question even lemon types question, simple question, non-technical question also will be asked. So preparation for your viva, for uh, your candidate at defense is very important, okay? So you have to demonstrate that you are master on in the literature on that topics. Indicate clearly which is her original work. If you want to be a good researcher, if you want to make a strong thesis, this is very unique point that your work must be original, okay? So recently I have given a seminar on addressing novelty, okay? So videos also uploaded in my YouTube channel, okay? It is very, very important. Without that, you cannot be a prolific researcher. You cannot publish your paper. You cannot publish your thesis. Examiners, panel members always will be asking, what is the originality? So when you present, highlight originality as strong as possible, okay? When you submit a paper for journal, you write one paragraph, two paragraphs, strongly highlighting that my work has extremely high originality. As a result, you will not face difficulties to publish in strong journal, good quality journal, particularly high impact journals. Okay? So these are some examples of novelties, discovery is something new, something different. So again, all these are also explained in my YouTube channel videos, writing with better impact. Okay, so these are some tips, guidelines also, 
as you know, what are the expectations from, from your supervisors? They want you to be independent, sincere, responsive, whatever KPI activities are given to you. Let's say now you are given to work on critical review of literatures. Even let's say that after 15 days, you will develop skeleton, develop content. And before even 15 days, you have developed your develop content. You are not lazy, okay? You did not drag it uh, two months, okay? So these are very important things. Otherwise, you cannot submit your thesis on time. Within three years, you cannot. So if you drag yourself, if you are not sincere responsive, actually it will take four years, five years, okay? So you cannot join your future career also, okay? So it is very, very important. Independent, less guided, okay? These are actually the unique characteristics as I discussed in the earlier slides also. Try to understand what is expected by your supervisors university so some of the guidelines i have mentioned so for example so strong supervisor good supervisors always will be looking for not your only behavior most importantly your progress technical progress writing paper addressing novelties writing a critical review designing your project or a phd very strong with innovative ideas okay so try to mind map what is actually supervisor is expecting if he wants you to meet regularly, okay, fulfill that requirement. If he wants you to publish a paper within two or three months, try your best, okay? And university requirement, I shared. So this is very important. So that's why I have provided here one important slide, communication skill. And earlier also I talked a little bit more about this communication skill. So this is one of the top skills needed in this 21st century. Whether you will be an academician, whether you will be working at the industry or entrepreneur, this communication skill is extremely important. Okay? So what are the elements of communication? So you need to write. That is also part of communication. Okay? So as I mentioned, you need to write your paper, thesis, proposal, progress, report. So that's why I mentioned uh, improving your English writing capabilities is very, very important. So if you are poor, if you from Middle Eastern countries, if you from non-native English speakers, your undergraduate study was not in English, I think you attend some courses, four months, six months, you uh, go for ILTS, TOEFL, and regularly read the English newspaper. Speak with other people, okay? In, even in, uh, <coughs> sorry, in YouTube channel also, there are some uh, maybe uh, videos, you watch them, how to improve your writing also, okay? So spoken, normally this is uh, the, the gray area. This is the difficult areas. Many of us, even though writing is good, but we cannot speak well. Even though speak can speak, but it is broken, it is accent, but you have to talk like, you know, anyone can understand, okay? So again, you need a lot of practice on this, okay? Uh, so you need to speak with your supervisors, committee member, panel member, audience, news, social media. So you have very good results, very nice results, but now you are going to communicate to the social media. You don't know how to speak with them. You cannot sell your ideas, okay? And also you have to be a good researcher so that you can communicate with the non-science people also. Then your research will be, you'll be a very, very good researcher, okay? You need to communicate email with supervisor, editors, reviewer, collaborators, others. So you need to learn also how to Okay, presenting in conference, meeting face to face. So these are the areas where you need a lot of communication skills. Okay, so how to improve? As I mentioned, learning English must. Okay, it is not one day practice, it is not one hour practice, it is a continuous practice. I would suggest those who are weak, you spend half an hour, one hour every day. If you are still uh, moderate, I think still you can spend uh, maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes as you need. Never stop, okay? Reading, writing, spoken, listening, ILTS also, go for ILTS, TOEFL, uh, some university courses, for example, Malaysian English test, okay? Any other English courses, you go and improve, learn. And as I mentioned, newspaper is actually one of the best way. This is actually the not surface. If you go ILTS, TOEFL, this is for the sake of your admission. It will not make you strong. Okay, even though you got ILTS uh, very good grading rating. To me, I think the original or root was the uh, most important uh, approach is actually 
uh, if you read newspaper every day regularly, this not only for you English language, I think that some of the other knowledge also you can improve by reading this newspaper. Okay, so these are best practices. Reading high quality papers. So when you are reading, because science, uh, newspapers and scientific papers are different. So you read them and also try to understand. Social media, YouTube, online seminars. So not only that, I think also attend seminars to improve your, how the people speak, how they present. Okay, so try to identify the best presenter in YouTube. For example, you see someone's presentation is 10 million views. Okay, this is something you need. So that actually will tell you, or you will get some ideas. Oh, this presentation is very, very good. So they are content, they are style, they are videos, they are animations, speaking. These are the ways basically to learn, okay? This is the practice I do, as I mentioned. I explored who are the best researcher in my area, what is his citation index, what is his age index, and then I follow them, okay? And also when you speak, I think know your audience, technical people, non-technical people. So when you go conference, there will be non-technical people also, there will be maybe newspaper, there may be uh, politician. So try to understand how to convince them, okay? I mean, how to impress them. So you have very good technical results. Technical people knows, but you need to convince some non-technical people for uh, getting a job or to get, uh, you know, to get some funding. Sometimes when you are, uh, it is associated with the funding, some non-technical people also involved. Let's say secretary from ministry or someone politician. So if you can convince them, if you can write the content in a non-scientific way, I'm sure that everybody will be impressed and as a result, you will uh, win your projects, okay? So I hope you understand the importance of communication skill. So these are other skills, since we don't have time, uh, I have video in my YouTube channel, this critical thinking. So research is basically critical thinking, right? Without critical thinking, we cannot go into deeper of your problem, novelties, critical review of literature, critical interpretation, it is very important. So in a summarized way, critical thinking is asking question to identify your root causes four, five, six times. Again and again, ask question. Why, what, how, when, why not this way? Why this is expensive? Why this problem? How? Okay. Ask question again and again until you enter into the deeper cause. That is critical thinking. Without being a critical thinker, you cannot be a good researcher. So this critical thinking is not only good for your thesis. I think if you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be a businessman, you want to be a good mother to take care of your children, your children has problem. So you need to critically think, critically identify what is the root cause. If you want to be a good father, you need to critically think to guide your children. Let's say they are not studying. So you need to critically think what might be the reason, okay? So as I mentioned, the teamwork is also very important. Collaboration is also very important. Research is not, cannot be done by one person. Okay, you always need the other people uh, who are experts for resources, for writing, for communication, many other purposes without a collaboration, you cannot be a prol prolific researcher. Okay, you may not have necessary resources also. Even though, for example, in our lab at uh, Sano University, we have impressive lab, but still we need some of the equipment from other universities. And as I mentioned, lifelong learning is very, very important. Okay, you never stop learning. And best motivation is the self-motivation. Okay, this is the way that I work. I don't need motivation from others. I always make my own plan, uh, KPI, own uh, criteria. Okay, so let's say I managed to publish in Impact Factor 10, 12, then I make my own KPI, own motivation that I published papers in Impact Factor 2030. That's how we managed already, okay? I try to manage myself, okay, by myself. So when I face extreme difficulties, of course, I got some motivation, those who are expert, who are good in that areas, okay? When I face some challenges, I feel that I'm not expert. I don't have enough knowledge. Then probably I talk with my friend. For example, recently I faced some of the personal problem. Then I need to go and talk with the human resource Okay, and then I need to go even to the, to report to the police and even I need to go to the, uh, to solve the problem, uh, uh, to recruit the uh, lawyer. Okay, because I'm not expert in that case. Okay, so uh, this will be my uh, last 
slide with some other side slides may not go so much so as i mentioned if you are if you want to do a good research you need resources so actually sometimes without thinking all these necessary resources you design your project and it will drag you and maybe also you need to abandon your project because you don't have some of the equipment some of the resources so without thinking without proper planning if you design your project at the end it is something like very uh, you know the it is a dreamy project maybe it will take 4 years uh, 10 years 8 years and some of the equipment don't have and maybe after starting a uh, few months uh, six months or one year you feel that this is not feasible and as a result you need to change the topics after uh, one year if you need to change the topics i'm sure that these are the bad practices and this happens this will create frustration for you and as a result maybe you will abandon you will stop your PhD and masters okay so this is extremely uh, particularly my team is extremely careful any student we take we gave them these are our equipment these are some of the topics you have to work within this boundary you cannot uh, design a project that cannot be completed without uh, that cannot be completed by our resources that we have in our lab yes of course let's say we don't have SEM, FSM. yes we can use some other universities okay provided that we have some resources we have some money for that okay uh, so uh, equipment, software, computer tools, when you are designing, you see that whether all these are there or not. Materials, consumables, paper, thesis, databases, okay? So you need to download all these necessary things. Collaboration, as I mentioned, language capability, run it in EndNote also, when you are writing a thesis, review paper, so you need to learn EndNote also, okay? Not only that, I think that some uh, drawing of figures, visual figures, uh, for example, origin, some computational software also you can use to draw your good uh, figures. Okay, there may be many other things also. Okay, so these are important things also before designing your research, you need to be careful with this. So talk with your supervisors, talk with other researchers in your team and design a project such that it is achievable. That is the smart objectives defined. Achievable, realistic, reasonable, it is not dreamy. Okay, it is a PhD project, so three objectives is enough, but you design it such a way that it is five objectives equivalent to uh, four PhD, two PhD. So those are the things actually you need to think here also. Okay, so this slide is very important. So peer review process, as you can see, your thesis, your paper will go through. Reviewer number one, reviewer number two, sometimes can be four or five reviewers. It can be first review, second review, third review, and so on, okay? So there can be examiner one, two, three, board members, panel members. As you can see, they are in front of you to stop you. Actually not stop, to ensure the quality, right? These are the big people, top people, world-class people, you see. They are in front of you actually to ensure that quality is there, to guide you, to train you, to make you better. That's why this PRDB process is very important. So before submitting a thesis so if you publish four or five papers so you see now you are already familiar with the examination process so that's why i would say that this publication process is actually one of the best practice if you go thesis submission without this peer review process i think you will face a lot of difficulties okay So I have a video in my YouTube channel, how to address reviewer comments, how to avoid rejection. So you can watch those videos as well. So uh, these I will not go more details. Maybe we'll spend some time on the discussion. So these are basically writing, how to write your thesis can it depend. So I have a video in my YouTube channel. Please explore more in my YouTube channel. I'll share that. How to write attractive abstract, okay? Uh, how to write introduction, uh, these are smart objectives. Loom's taxonomy will help you to address the depth and breadthness of your objectives. So in that uh, video, so you'll find uh, more details. Okay, so this is actually extremely important wow factor. So recently I organized a workshop seminar. Uh, I think you watch in my YouTube channel, how to address novelty, identify and address novelty. So it was around uh, one hour. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is how to address, uh, okay, critical review of literature. Let me go through quickly. 
these are the things actually you watch uh, from my YouTube channel. Okay, so this is my YouTube channel. So YouTube at the end, as you can see at the right, Saidur912. Okay, so you can find it. You can put my name also there, Saidur Rahman. You will find this. Okay, so uh, these are the some of the contents. I have 32 videos, all as you can see, critical thinking in research, how to select your PhD and master topics. This is also part of today's discussion, how to address challenging review comments, how to avoid paper rejection, citation impact, uh, attractive admission proposal. This is also for your PhD before joining PhD, how to select high impact topics. As I mentioned, citation impact is very important. Uh, topic is very important, writing a strong cover letter, secrets of writing research grant proposal. So 32 videos and how to go for interview also, how to prepare documents for interview. So as you know, I have 26 years of experience and many researchers are continuously requesting me to share my experience. And since I am also trained by getting the taxpayers money, so I am happy, I am uh, obliged to share my experiences. These are one-stop center and you don't need to pay anything to watch this video, okay? And I don't have intention to charge also. As I mentioned, I want to inspire young researcher. That is my main goal, target, intention also for collaboration purpose. So you can watch uh, the videos in my YouTube channel at your convenient time. And as you can see, time is always limited. So it's almost one hour. Okay, so that's all. So those who want to communicate with me, want to collaborate with me, want to work with me, with, uh, want to use our lab facilities, for your information, we have very impressive lab. We spend uh, 5 million Malaysian ringgit to build the lab. So you can find in my YouTube channels also opportunities at RCNMET. And we also have a uh, PhD program, scholarship around 3,000 ringgit per month. Very impressive scholarships. So all those details also in my YouTube channel. And those who want to communicate with me, this is my email address. This is the best way to communicate with me. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation. So let me see the um, comments. Uh, okay, so maybe... Uh, Patmawati, you can highlight some of the uh, questions also. Okay, yeah, that's all about the presentation. Now you can share your challenge. What are the challenges you face with your supervisors, with your writing? So, okay, so uh, we can spend some time here to discuss, okay, to address your questions. Okay, please. All right, Prof. Uh, we have one question here from uh, YouTube our YouTube channel, uh, each from each Chan. Hi, Prof. I have two questions uh, for the first one. As we were given SV by the university, how do we know in short time that our SV, our supervisor is a good one? Yeah, it is a good question. Uh, recently, I posted a um, short, uh, short uh, tips in my LinkedIn and uh, Facebook also, I specifically mentioned how to select good supervisors. So what is the purpose? You are trying to get a training, right? A supervisor who can give you the best training. Now, how to know that whether he or she is a good supervisor, right? So you need to see that where he published, whether he has a publication. So you see his Google Scholar citation. You can see citation, you can see H-index, and where he or she publish. Then you can see his left facilities. Of course, he published in good quality journal. He must have good left facilities. And if you cannot identify that, I think this is where you can ask his team member. You can visit his lab. Okay? So these are the some of the ways. And also, probably, when he give any seminar you attend, and you are, let's say, trying to looking for a supervisor, uh, so, you found that this supervisor in University of Malaya or Sano University, so wherever he give a talk, seminar, for example, I have my YouTube channel, you watch that, where I publish, what is my H index, citation index, so you explore my Scopus profile, you explore my, uh, 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 explore the papers I published in Science Direct, and also uh, maybe some other supervisors also, some other, particularly I think with some students, they know much more than others about the supervisor, so if you can, these are, again, as I mentioned, the, if you start collaboration where you want to study your higher studies before starting, I think this will make you able to identify your best supervisors, 
identify whether that supervisors are strong, good, whether necessary things he or she has. And maybe also that supervisor is really good to take care of students or not. Okay, I think maybe you can uh, set for an interview or discussion, or maybe you send an email, you start to uh, WhatsApp. Through that also, you'll feel that how good, if good supervisor, he will communicate, he will give you the guideline. So for example, if someone don't work, want to work with me, so I uh, take his WhatsApp number, I share my YouTube channel, I share the resources, opportunities we have. So continuously we start, I think this will convince the student, okay, this supervisor is really very, very helpful, okay? And if supervisor, you send an email, you send a WhatsApp message, he does not reply, he does not give you the guideline, so definitely you'll feel that, okay, this is the right person for me. Okay, I hope that answered the question. Okay, Prof. The second one from uh, Ichan. We are supposed to embrace technology advancements such as AI. How to keep our originality while keeping up with the technology? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes, sure. We are supposed to embrace technology advancements such as AI. How to keep our origin originality while keeping up with the technology? Yeah, I think the, it's the originality is, is nothing with the, the technology. Yes, technologies are coming, uh, new technologies coming, meaning that these are the new things. Uh, so when we talk about that to address or to understand the novelty, so uh, it's not with the technology. It is with the critical review of literatures. So technologies are coming and challenges are also coming, right? And whatever technologies they are, no technology is perfect. So that imperfection is the actually originality, novelties you need to address, you need to improve. For example, you develop a material, but still it is expensive. So you need to reduce the cost. For example, the electric vehicles, this is the latest technology, right? So how much energy can be stored? Vehicle can run, let's say 500 kilometers. So why not try to make it uh, vehicle run uh, without charging 1000 kilometers? Right, so you can do, you can address these novelties by critical review of literature. Let's say AI, let's say electric vehicle, some papers are published, some technologies are developed, right? You go through, you read that technology, you read all those papers, 10 papers, five papers, 100 papers, and then you see what are the technology gap. Nothing is perfect. As I give example, so they use certain materials, but this material is expensive. So you make an attempt to reduce cost by 10%. Electric vehicle. So charging, it takes long time. So you are going to develop a technology that will charge faster. Okay, I hope that answer your question. All right, Prof. Uh, another one from Janna Mohammed. Uh, that is from uh, our Zoom. I have some paper with supervisor name and some not in PhD time. The other paper, not including supervisor name, is any benefit for PhD or counting? Could you tell me? Could you tell me, please, how many publication need for PhD in UGC in Bangladesh, sir? Uh, okay, so the two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, I cannot tell you the other universities required, right? So you have to where you are enrolled. You go and ask that administrator. Uh, associate dean or who are who are involved in that postgraduate department ask them get the guideline okay whether papers needed one paper scopus paper or index paper get from there i cannot give you that answer that is your responsibility okay so this is normally during orientation some university will highlight these are the requirements or program leader program committee members actually will can tell you with that respective so as I mentioned, it can vary from university to university. Let's say uh, 100 universities in Bangladesh. How I know that? I don't know. Okay. So I also don't study, don't do research in Bangladesh. So I don't know that requirement. So please do by yourself. Uh, okay. Second point is that some papers are before starting a PhD. Uh, if all those are relevant with your PhD, uh, Yes, it might be useful. So I cannot again give you the right answer. So this second committee will decide how much uh, similar. And also, I think that if, uh, as you mentioned, also can I publish also something without supervisor? So if it is your previous work, you don't want to involve your supervisor. The recording has you. stopped. If this you meeting want is being recorded. To involve your supervisor, and it is aligned with your thesis topics. I think it is good. 
you involve with supervisor and publish together. So these are again, uh, you need to uh, mutually discuss with your supervisor, resolve these issues, uh, okay? Whether you want to uh, publish with supervisors or without supervisors, okay? You make your own uh, good plan. All right. Okay, the last one, Prof. Uh, please, how do I secure fully funded scholarship from your university? This is from Suraja Ibrahim. Yeah, as I mentioned, we have a fully funded PhD program, 3,000 ringgit per month. So you can watch a video in my YouTube channel, Opportunities at RC and Matt. You will find each and every details. And also in LinkedIn, I think that our president, uh, many other schools also uh, shared that uh, scholarship, fully funded scholarship available, but with the criteria. Uh, if you are looking for fully funded PhD, so for your master's, you need CGPA 3.5 and one Scopus Index Journal. These are the two most important criteria. Without this, you are not eligible. If you are eligible, then you need to write a, a proposal, you need to fill the form, you need to go through three interviews, one with your supervisor and his team, then with the school level interview, and then finally university level. So it is not an easy, because 3,000 uh, uh, ringgit uh, scholarship, very impressive scholarship. Okay, and those who are uh, want to do PhD with direct entry, direct from uh, undergraduate, yes, if CGPA is 3.67 and above, you are entitled for this fully funded PhD. Mm -hmm. Okay, CGPA undergraduate 3.67 and above. Mm -hmm. But you need to go through some special evaluation process because you don't have publication, you're also undergraduate. That extra committee uh, evaluation need to go through. Okay, yes. Uh, we have this uh, uh, fully funded scholarship. Okay, you can explore in my YouTube channel and also in my social media platform for more details. Okay, Prof. I guess this is the last one. Hi, Prof. I have completed my PhD and working as a lecturer and publication is part of KPI. My question is, where do I start? This is from Hawa. So he has... Uh, completed his PhD, started as a lecturer. Yes. Uh, and now he want to start his publication. The publication is part of the KPI. The question is, where do I start? Yeah, so I don't know if you already have uh, completed your master PhD, you are a lecturer. So you already started uh, during your PhD. So why you stop? If you stop, I think you have to improve your momentum. Anyway, uh, so now is the, uh, again, you need to make your good plan. I also have a very good video in my YouTube channel, Lisa Strategy. That one actually will help you extensively. But let me briefly tell you. So I hope you have some content for from your PhD. That content actually now you can refine, you can update. Probably if you need further uh, testing, generate new results, you do that and you start to publish, okay? You create your momentum. This is one thing. And since you are a lecturer, so you will be able to supervise some of the undergraduate students. This is what I practiced when I was in University of Malaya. I had around five to 10 students, undergraduate students. So at least two to three topics I gave in such a way that this, okay? So uh, before giving the project, you need to do a lot of homework. This is where to start. You need to do homework, meaning that identify that project will be strong novelty, okay? Uh, study some literature, identify some hot topic that will be also good for your research, citation impact, okay? You design a project that with the strong novelty, with the wow factor will give some impact and that is publishable. And give it to the students, monitor the students, work with the students, achieve some results, and then you know the undergraduate students' work, which is hard to publish, you need to be involved, you refine it, you modify it, spend a lot of time, okay? But some data actually student can produce, that actually will reduce your time, okay? By refining, by improving, I think you can uh, publish, if not possible in Q1, I managed to publish in Q1 journal from undergraduate students' work. If you were not published in Q1 journal, I think no harm to publish in- The recording has stopped. Q2 and Q3. Okay, and then also slowly. This meeting is being uh, recorded. You are working in a university, try to identify the resources. For example, if you, let's say, the my colleague at Sun University School of So 
we two opportunities we have uh, okay work with the people those who have the necessary resources who are like man mandate who can help you who can help you to generate data this is your university level also you uh, start to collaborate with other universities where like minded uh, necessary resources are there start to collaborate with them approve them okay i am working in this area i want to okay wa work on this review paper i have some data okay let's work together okay so these are various ways actually uh, you can start and also uh, start applying for research funding okay big funding major funding internal funding external funding and put the they are the phd and master students in that proposal okay some funding so if you get that funding i'm sure that it will be very convenient uh, convenient for you to uh, you know uh, run that projects okay you will be able to supervise students you will be able to publish a paper so funding is actually extremely important okay to start something to do research okay so as i was in university of malaya so my career profile actually was enriched when i got that high impact research of 3.6 million in university of malaya and i designed in such a way that you know i can recruit uh, many students and it was very very successful it was university of malaya most of the students from bangladesh uh, top universities good students potential students i was very young spent time with the students as if i am also students i used to work 18 hours sometimes maybe 20 24 hours even up to 3 o'clock 4 o'clock uh, am night okay this is how i build my career okay so i hope i have given you enough answer if you can digest i think it will be very very good and also watch a video in my youtube channel research strategy for early career research okay mashallah mashallah okay uh, so this is a short short note for everyone uh, we don't have evaluation form for this webinar but we will use registration form for certificate all right so yes prof uh, i guess uh, we have uh, reached the end of the webinar and we would like to thank uh, professor saidur for the very insightful uh, insightful talk very mind blowing and also the bangladeshi students uh, union malaysia as well as education and research desk um, till we meet again assalamualaikum and good night all thank right you thank you i hope it will be useful okay yes yeah, uh, see you sometime later inshallah. okay thank you inshallah. bye assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam inshallah, inshallah.